Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of analyzing the Muslim heroes of Speaker's Corner. And here I want to spend some time looking at a series of three videos under the title of Atheist slash Agnostic Refuted by Science on a channel called EF Dawa. So well, actually this was supposed to be very quick. I just wanted to show some contradictions, some obvious idiotic statements. And that was supposed to be like four or five minutes. But then I was asked to go deeper and then I went deeper and made more comments and got more quotes. And then now this is going to be a huge long video. Sorry about that. Um, if you want to speed, well, then you can't hear it. Anyway, if you enjoy this kind of thing, have fun. Because once upon a time, on an island in the North Sea, there was this Muslim apologist, a red beard who was known in the land as Hamza something, who was in a park discussing Islam and his favorite creator. Okay, let's, let's get a bit more serious because in the beginning of the video, it's a bit confusing as it seems to show some highlights before commencing with the discussion itself. This seems to be this, this new thing where everything is seen as a production. And these highlights are some, should I be polite or honest, some, some really stupid arguments to set the stage, which I will address appropriately because I, unlike the Muslim apologist in the video, I provide complete arguments, at least I try to. And I try to bring evidence and rational reasoning, not fallacies, empty claims and lies. And just to demonstrate the level of dishonesty here and the level of deceit we will encounter throughout the video, let me analyze one of these highlights. It starts with a condescending remark about learning something today. And then, just as was the case with Muhammad Hijab's arrogant attitude when he made the huge blunder with this logical paradox, this, this Hamza guy here also shows what an embarrassment he really is. He states, Jot, are you going to listen? Yeah, I'm going to oh, okay. listen. You're going to learn something today. No, yes, no, 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 no. All right. Time and space is what where is. If you go into the dictionary, look at where, a point in time and space. So let's do just that and look up the word where. Whoops, it does not say what this apologist says it does or wants it to say. All dictionaries I consulted agree that where relates to a place, three-dimensional and determined by a set of coordinates. And the word when would relate to time. So if he thinks someone can learn from him, he's totally deluded. The point I want to make here is that these apologists deliver total bullshit with total confidence and arrogance. They will lie and deceive without blinking, just to please the imaginary sky daddy and make Islam look better than it is. But they will not admit they were wrong or that they made a mistake and, God forbid, apologize. Another example now from within the video itself is this one. Because you, nothing causes nothing. Nothing comes from nothing. This in itself is a clear statement. But this guy also claims just a little bit later. I'm saying God created the universe out of nothing. Out of nothing. I'm saying that, yeah. So which one is it? Nothing or not nothing? Am I the only one to notice this, this glaring incompetence, both by the God of Islam and the apologists of Islam? Why are the Muslims standing next to this guy only bobbing their heads instead of stopping this embarrassing fool? Okay, so now I've set the expectation level. Let me also point out, in case this is not clear yet, that this Hamza guy is frightfully ignorant and has zero education regarding anything scientific. And yet, he goes where he should really stay away as far as possible, and that is science. He's constantly talking about science and the scientific method, getting it all wrong, constantly embarrassing himself. So I will not be pointing out every single blunder, but just some examples. Oh, and just for the record, no, contrary to what the title claims, no atheist is refuted. No agnostic is refuted and there is no science in these three videos. None at all. It's just fairy tales, presupposition and plain ignorance. And in the end, he actually spells it out where he simply defines a creator or God into existence and makes it uncaused and everything else caused. And that is his life in a nutshell. Play pretend like a kid and believe everything else on blind faith. Things like his hellfire. 
And this is the basis for believing that running around a black stone in Mecca seven times is a requirement for admittance into a paradise no normal person would want to be in. Okay. The video proper seems to start off at 118. This is video number one, okay? And the whole affair is something like 147. So there's a lot of bullshit to wade through. He starts off with, I believe it. Okay. I accept it to be true without proof. Do I need proof? Proof, proof. He's, he's constantly on about proof where the word he's looking for is actually evidence. And if he looks this one up, it will agree with me, I hope, because evidence is nothing else. I mean, simplified is just either it's the verification or the falsification of a conclusion. So you, you have an idea or something and then you find the evidence that which either backs you up or it says, nope, you're wrong. And that's it. But you can believe without this evidence. Okay, I've explained all this in my uh, gumball video, so you can you can check that out there. We're talking about proof here. If I can prove my father is my father by doing a DNA test, that's proof. Now for him, again, it's proof. He, he says he has proof if he has a DNA test. Totally ignorant of what a DNA test actually is and that it assigns a probability range. It's not proof. So right off the bat, we see once again, he does not understand what evidence is, what proof is, and he's not, he doesn't have a clue what he's actually talking about. He says, the question, why do you believe what you believe, is a stupid question. That means an atheist shouldn't ask me, why do I believe in God? Yeah? It's a stupid question. Because he does not understand the question. He goes on to say that challenging his belief regarding his God, we need to challenge the reasons for his belief, which is what the question why quite adequately does, I think. Now, if you want to challenge my belief, to collapse that belief, you have to challenge my reasons for that belief. And that's all I'm doing here. Now, after four minutes, we get the first Shabir Shuffle move, shifting the berm over to the other side to then attack the claims without answering the questions put to him. So now I ask you why you believe what you believe. What do you believe? What do you believe and why? And then a weird contradiction where he says it means nothing and then says I did not say it means nothing. What do you mean? What does that mean? It means nothing. What does that mean? Yeah, you believe, you believe nothing, what about yourself? It means nothing to you. No, 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 no. But I me, didn't say it means that. everything. I didn't claim it means nothing. I didn't claim it means nothing when that is exactly what he just did, just mere seconds earlier. And then changes it to a question because he realizes that he's just lied. What does it mean? Nothing. No, what does it mean? As, oh, All right, I'm using the word belief as, as the word is, is understood. You, know, you accept uh, something to be true. I okay, so he, he goes again, because this, this belief thing, he doesn't understand what belief is. He, uh, he says Sarah has explained it, um, and, and he talks about this several times, but he doesn't seem to know what, it's, what it is. He doesn't understand um, evidence, proof, belief, knowledge, faith. He doesn't know what all of that is. So the Muslim changes tack completely now, asking the non-Muslim, What do you believe with regards to the existence of God? I believe in myself. No, I and he can't comprehend the answer. In his limited mind, there is no me. So believing me and believing in me doesn't exist for him because he's just got his God. And, and someone saying there is no God belief is beyond his mental capability. So he tries to make a non-belief into a belief, the Shabia Shuffle, asking for a justification for this non-belief and then goes where he shouldn't go, where he, again, he has no knowledge. Cosmology. No, no. So what do you believe in? Do you believe the universe created itself? Why, does, why would he think that any opinion by some random person in Hyde Park on Speaker's Corner regarding the origin of, the, of our universe or all universes or whatever has any effect on the existence of his God? Why, why does he think that? Why, why does he think that if you don't have an explanation for the origin of the universe, that automatically means you must accept his God? It's nonsense. <laughs> he, he questions the non-Muslim who seems to have some un undefined belief in some greater power and this, this Muslim Hansa now tries to catch the guy out, drilling deeper when the guy clearly says he does not want to discuss his belief. And then this Hamza, this, this Muslim guy, finally comes up with an interesting question. But what if what you believe um, isn't true? And this, if you believe isn't true, this seems to indicate that he does not see himself there. 
I wonder whether he himself has ever bothered to ask himself that very question. What if you believe isn't true? What if you find out? What, 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 what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And then a different guy gets impatient and cuts in, causing the Muslim to, well, now to fully embarrass himself. Yeah, okay. Factual, and ev factual evidence in science doesn't hold weight. And then... Facts in science are not set in stone. They change. Of course not. And the reason you don't know is because you believe in science that everything has a natural explanation. You believe in science. Oh, goodness. Okay. I, I don't know where to start here. Yes. They are. The atomic weight of lead will never be less than that of hydrogen. I mean, come on. And then he goes for the certainty and, and tries to undermine science. And this is simply too much to handle. How can anyone living in the 21st century be this ignorant and spew this much nonsense? How can you talk about science so much and have absolutely no clue what you're talking about? Facts are detected or observed and then combined to form conclusions. And these conclusions can be updated to reflect reality more accurately. And this is what this Muslim apologist can't handle. He needs to be told when to do what and what foot to use to enter a toilet. He is taught to obey, not to think. He doesn't understand that, that things like, like, I don't know, the, the ratio between distance, speed and time, the, the relationship does, is not going to change. That's a fact that this is going to stay. That's a fact, and that's a scientific fact, and that is not going to change. Oh, boy. Then he makes statements like, I went from atheist to agnostic, blissfully unaware of what nonsense that really is. And he claims he will destroy someone's agnosticism, the state of not knowing something. No, no, I'm going to destroy your agnosticism as lame also. I'm going to. 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 I'm going to destroy your agnosticism. No problem at all. Man, this guy is thick. And now confusion reigns, misunderstanding science, where it seems he considers science to be like godlike, dropping, you know, misunderstood sound bites like scientific method no, and things the, like. The premise of science is the supernatural doesn't exist. That's how stupid this guy is. Show me how to detect the supernatural and I will consider it. Until then, it remains an untestable, unverifiable belief, commonly known as faith. We know the uncaused cause of the universe exists. No, we don't. I mean, this guy leaves me speechless. How has he established this? People have tried the cosmological argument for millennia and have failed. Has he really managed to rule out every other possibility? Has he managed to identify the process of universe creation and compared it to a universe without or a different divine intervention? Is, if there is such a thing. And why, if his creator God can be an uncaused cause, why not the universe? He then invokes the myth of faith in scientism where according to this high and mighty Mr. Arrogance, every non-believer, of course, is using the wrong way of looking at his God. Now, I'm, I'm going to step back a bit and not take every single example here. I've already skipped a few because he drops these bombs of ignorance and utter stupidity in almost every sentence. Okay, now at 12.30, a more focused guy comes in and, and he asks... I just wanted to know, Hamza, what method are you using to come to the conclusion that there is a God, God. and is it a there universal message? Uh, so what method are you using to come to the conclusion that there is a God and is it universal? And the Muslim response right, was... I am using the scientific method mm -hmm. in the sense of I'm observing uh, the claims of those... <laughs> which 10 seconds earlier he dismissed. What? He realizes he's just painted himself into a corner and aborts halfway into the answer and sidetracks, completely losing the plot. He's thrown off his script and would now have to think for himself, something he doesn't know how to do, so he gives up and stutters and comes up with gibberish, ignoring the, the question completely and simply going back to another guy, hoping that will solve the problem and th th that it will somehow go away. 
And he goes into the next Shabia shuffle, where is the evidence that men created God, trying to deflect any incoming question he can't answer. Yes. How do we now know all that? these side jab questions by this Muslim can easily be answered by someone with more experience. But here, this this guy that I mean, he's simply using them to create an atmosphere of dominance, where he has to show his adoring fans he is in control and running the show, the lion tamer. This Hamza guy can't understand that if there really is a creator, this creator is inept and incompetent, giving us restricted vision and then putting itself out of reach of our vision or other senses, hiding from its own creation. He can't grasp the internal and logical contradictions in his doctrine. And when asked a rational, fact-based question, he simply falls. And then there comes the next try. What is your method? It's simply ignored. He can't think. Instead, he continuously asks the non-Muslim why he believes what he believes. And this is primitive. And then the question regarding methodology is asked again. What is the method yep, you use to come to the conclusion of God? And is it a universal method? Okay. Okay. To come to the same of course. Thing. So let's go. And results in yet another Shabia shuffle, asking others for the evidence of their claims. And spoiler alert, the question will not get answered. Not in these videos anyway. Not by this Hamza guy. We get the idiotic where and when mistake I pointed out earlier where is location and when is time. Look at where, a point know, in uh, time what and What a space. useless twat. But the Muslim fanboys around him all nod in agreement. Duh, I don't get this. And then to get out of this whole thing, he just simply claims his creator figure is outside of time and space. We believe that the creator is outside time and space. Really? I mean, if, if this, this creator God, if it doesn't exist in time, not, not for one second, what's the point? And if it doesn't exist in any place known to us, nowhere, what's the point? I mean, like, like Hyde Park, why not right here? What's the difference between undetectable and non-existent? But then, if this is an illogical question, his creator is illogical. He doesn't explain why, for example, a builder can't live inside the house he built. But he can't comprehend that with his limited mindset and limiting worldview. Ah, but, but it gets even worse, don't worry. The question of evidence of absence is now the scientific method. And it's a logical fallacy, all at the same time. Let's use the scientific method here. Is absence of evidence <laughs> evidence of absence? <laughs> no, any, anyone in command of both... Uh, come on. I mean, if you have two brain cells and can use them simultaneously, you can understand that the absence of an oil stain in the garage is evidence that the engine does not leak oil or that it's not used as a car park. So... Any effect directly associated with a cause which is absent is evidence for the absence of that cause. And it's, it's that easy. And he really calls it a logical fallacy. Then it, and, and of course, laws of logic. Oh boy, doesn't this guy understand anything? Isn't there just a tiny spark of intelligence left after Islam moves into a brain? And I will, I'll skip the strawman when believing my mum is my mum or my dad and so before I explode with frustration. The pandemonium which ensues when he thinks he's made a point is like a kiddie birthday oh, party. Oh, okay. We get to 31 minutes in the first video and his summary is his claim God doesn't exist, scientific, illogical, make it, yeah. and then you're done. Now in his bird brain, that's how it works. And then he would go home all proud of himself, bragging to himself, he really showed those atheists and those agnostics and anyone. <laughs> oh my God. And now it, it, he, he needs to gloat. I mean calling these poor guys and oh my goodness is, is there any reason to be condescending like that and then his opponent a french guy or something by the sound of it gives up and freely admits hamza won the debate based on clever wording not arguments or contents and then after that he's deluded believing what is contrary to all overwhelming evidence against Delus it. do you know what deluded means it means that what they believe is contrary to over overwhelming evidence against it. 
if deluded is believing what is contrary to all overwhelming evidence, uh, two minutes later he said the guy was deluded for believing his dad was his dad without evidence. Two minutes earlier he rejected the claim based on the reasons the guy gave to believe what he believes about his dad. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. Another Shabir shuffle, claiming the non-believer has to not only challenge his reasons, but is required to prove the opposite with evidence, something he rejected earlier. So he, on top of that, he misrepresents what was claimed. He simply lies and then tells the guy he's done. Man, what a useless threat. And then comes the next fallacy, if you claim I'm deluded, you're making God. If you say I'm deluded, now you're making a claim that God doesn't exist and I'm stupid for believing he does. No, actually he does not. No, 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 you can't dismiss it unless you produce evidence against it. No, actually you don't. He says, I have challenged what you believe and dismissed your reasons and you have done nothing to provide evidence against my beliefs. No, actually he has not. Yeah. He said I, I can never, never lose. ever lose in the yeah. past. Against people who don't have the experience to challenge these dishonest tactics used here, has he learned anything? No, hardly. Where he still has not answered the question, what method are you using to determine whether God exists or not, and is it universal? And we get to part two, the second video. And again, we have this pitiful part of snippets of how this deluded guy embarrasses himself accompanied by sound effects and visual overload. Ah, but that's subjective, so. But after two minutes of repetition and bragging, we witness a continuation of this cringe-worthy performance with the red beard who calls himself Hamza. Okay, we want the method of how you come to the conclusion of Allah or God, you start. Right. And is it a universal one? And if so, can you just teach it? We finally get to hear the question again about the method you come to the conclusion it is universal. So finally, there's some brains at play here. But Hamza can't grasp this and, and simply does not have the intelligence to understand the question. It's too much for him. I mean, he's heard this three or four or five times now and he still doesn't know the answer. Alhamdulillah. So your question is this, why do I believe a God exists, yeah? So what he hears is why do I believe a God exists, really? Is, is that what he hears? He can't process the question and just simply make stuff up. So he can't, he can't grasp the full extent and then comes up with something that has very little to do with the actual question. It shows how Islam can harm and damage a working brain so that only parts of reality gets through. And then he further dumbs it down and demonstrates his primitive and childish disposition by saying, why do I believe when I can't see a God? Why do I believe a creator exists when I've never seen one yet? Unfortunately, the questioner does not see through the tactics employed instead of insisting on getting an answer, allows Hamza to resume his rehearsed script. Now, he previously claimed he believed in gods before Islam. And now we get some insight into the workings of this primitive and underdeveloped brain. And it's very easy. I can't understand evolution or something, therefore God. I am stupid, therefore God. And that's all there is. I can't understand and I can't say I don't know. So I just make up fairy tales and, and monsters in the sky. Because science does not immediately have an answer I can understand, I replace reality with the sky daddy. And that's, that's all there is, nothing more. This is why the majority of humans with this God belief, like, like this poor, deluded, uneducated guy here in the video, believe they're gods. 5,000 or so of them, but every one of them unique and of course the most important one. So then, you know, another shabbier shuffle. I believe the universe has not always existed, and if you do, you make a claim, now you need to prove it. So if someone claims the universe has always existed, I want to know why they believe that. I want to see what, 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 what reason they have to believe that. Okay. No. And next comes a blatant lie. I side with the idea that the way the universe is, I don't believe, I believe it had a beginning, though, um, I believe something must have started, something must have caused it. This is in agreement with modern science today, that uh, Big Bang or whatever you want to call it. So I side with the idea that the way the universe is, I don't believe it had a beginning, something must have started, something must have caused it. This is in agreement with modern science today, Big Bang, whatever you want. No, that is a lie. Science does not claim that something must have started it. And the Big Bang is not the origin of the universe. What an ignorant fool. Why do so many Muslims mention cosmology and cosmogony when they simply have no clue, no understanding whatsoever of what that is? And next up, he runs into a series of claims, all nonsensical and fabricated. No, well, this is scientific. 
thoughts. Okay, I've observed that nothing exists without a cause. Scientific, yeah? This blatant display of stupidity and ignorance gets quite embarrassing. Has he really examined everything in the universe and all other possible universes? No, so why does he make such a nonsensical statement? When confronted with a direct and logical question again, he completely fails, stutters, and mumbles incoherent stuff, delivering this masterpiece of eloquent wording. If, if I say the universe existed, and what caused it, re scientific method, yeah, cannot be, uh, in, in, sorry, it has to be infinite using the scientific method of nothing if uh, the infinite regression. Is infinite regression philosophical? Is it philosophical or scientific? I would say it's scientific. If, if I say universe exists, it would cause a scientific method. Yeah, cannot be a, sorry, has to infinite, use a scientific method. N n nothing can, uh, if the infinite regression, if, is it philosophical or scientific? Uh, neither, it's a logical question, but it, it's often brought up in philosophy. And no, it has nothing to do with the scientific method he brings up every five seconds without understanding it. I'm not sure whether to despair or giggle hysterically or simply facepalm every few seconds. What is interesting is that when he is totally lost, he simply blurts out this scientific method, <laughs> which seems to be his safe space, where he thinks nobody can touch or challenge him. Obviously, he's mistaken. I, I would have long challenged him to explain this scientific method he constantly uses, where I claim he does not know the first thing about what it means and what it entails and how it is applied. Because you, nothing causes nothing. Nothing comes from nothing. And so the universe requires a cause, and this cause needs to be uncaused, and needs cause to be intelligent. So therefore, I believed in a creator. It's idiotic, isn't it? I mean, I highlighted this earlier. Why or how can he forget in Islam the creator creates from nothing? And let's face it, if there was a creator, it's not too bright, is it? If the creator were all-powerful, we wouldn't have so much chaos in the universe, and animals, including humans, wouldn't have so many defects. And if his creator would be all-knowing, we would not require a test. And if this creator would be all-merciful, there would be no hell. You know, just plain logics. Where... And let's face it, living a peaceful life in harmony with nature and other animals while executing some useless rituals for our beloved creator would be inscribed in our brain. And there would be no problems on this planet. So this creator fails everywhere and all the time here in the real world. This is not the case. So where is his creator? And what methodology exactly has he used to come to this conclusion this thing exists? Well, here it is. It turns from I believe to... I needed a connection to this creator because I, I know that this creator's there. Suddenly claiming knowledge of something that does not exist. Poor man. And somehow, in his delusion, he thinks he has a purpose. You know, like, like a toaster has a purpose. Forgetting he is a human being with ambitions, achievements, satisfaction, accomplishments, challenges, and... and, 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 and. But does his creator, God, have a purpose? Hmm. But to go back a bit, is he answering the initial question? No, he just talks a lot but says very little and least of all tells us what methodology he has used other than admitting he does not understand anything and needs a God to get him through the day, describing his delusion. I mean, sure, kids do this, but adults? And 15 minutes into now the second video, things take an interesting turn, where the questioner simply accepts the feeble, nonsensical answer and goes back to what the Muslim claimed earlier regarding his favorite God and the location of outside the universe and outside of time and space and that it is illogical to ask the question. Yeah, what I said to you is this. I said, where does it not apply to God? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's illogical. Okay. So the guy now says, well, according to Tabari, Muhammad was able to pinpoint a place. And now what happens is interesting because the Muslim, dis this is the typical apologist reaction, okay? Responding with doubt. He questions whether this particular story is authentic and should be taken as a fact, where the parts he likes are, of course, authentic. He asks the non-Muslim whether he thinks Tabari is a reliable source, when quite obviously the non-Muslim should have asked first whether the Muslim considers Tabari a reliable source. It's tactics.
And okay, th- this is from my experience. You always start by asking what would be considered a reliable source if you are in a situation like this. And then you continue by quoting the text next to the one that you need to, and then establish authenticity. And only then, after this has been established, you go to the one you actually want. You know, like, now that we have and you have accepted the authenticity, what is your response to the next sentence, which says blah, blah, blah. Like this, you you know, you stop all this, this pussyfooting around. Like this Hamza guy who suddenly rejects any form of thinking and any brain activity and says he only accepts what all scholars agree on, <laughs> which would be precious little. Oh, boy. And I mean, you, you need to know, and we can observe this here once again, that many Muslim apologists are dishonest and cheat every way they can. Like this Muslim here who, when confronted with a very definite spatial location, lies and says a throne is simply outside of time and space. Everywhere outside time and space. This is so childish. And he goes into this spiral of doom, jumps around, and when his attempt at another Shabir shuffle fails, throws out bits of nonsense. He's asked where time and space is and asked the questioner where time and space is when he never, not once, even used the words. This is what you're up against. It's stupidity, ignorance, deceit, lies, tricks, deception, whatever you can. But when confronted with the question again, he responds with gibberish. He suddenly ignores the question and addresses someone else, hoping the question will go away. And he does, he does get away with it. People simply don't understand the games being played here and don't react to them. And it was only after the rationalizer failed with with Shabir that people listened to my analysis and realized what was being played here. And I hope I can expose the tactics a lot quicker and get others to apply them and expose these dishonest charlatans a little bit sooner this time. Because, again, the Muslim makes it look as though the claim he makes requires counterclaims and counter-evidence, when it does not. All the questioner had to do is insist on an answer to his initial question. And the Muslim would have died a slow, painful defeat. But he's constantly thrown back into the water and comes back with more bullshit. Don't allow that. Stick with your drilling. Never stop. The moment you hesitate, the, the tables are turned and you lose. The, mo- the Mos- I mean, the Muslim is a master of taking over and you lose. Don't ever let this guy ask a question. You ask. And the Muslim needs to answer since the Muslim is the one making all the claims. It's that easy. But it's difficult to execute. I know. I've, I've also made this mistake and I still do. But the Muslim in the video believes because the Quran tells him to. So the point here is this. The reasons I have to support what I believe is the Quran. So challenge this belief. But again, not by saying here's the Quran and here's why it's wrong, but by asking the Muslim to defend this belief regarding the veracity of the Quran. Let the Muslim give you an example from the Quran and then take it apart. Never start the discussion with a claim. I've, I always make that mistake, I know. So I'm, I'm trying to help others here. But that's my experience in these kind of talks. And we're at the end now where the Muslim actually makes an interesting claim. Because the cause of the universe can't be the universe. The cause of the universe has to be external to the universe. He claims that there's a cause and it must be outside of what it causes. And that cause is his favorite hero in his favorite fairy tale. And that is the entire contents of his belief and the basis for his entire existence. His only explanation is that he defines this creator as being uncaused and for his simple mind that is sufficient, not realizing that anyone can define the universe as being eternal and uncaused and that's the end of that one. And there's nobody here, unfortunately, who takes him to task and who really stays on topic to get a statement which can be used as a basis for a serious discussion. It's a pity. The Muslim is simply too slippery here and gets away with his childish disposition. Oh well, better luck next time. And that's that's probably why the video ended up here and was not deleted. Because the remaining 20 odd minutes and all of part three are just people talking about different creators and the Muslim shifting everything to suit his needs and, you know, just to display his mindset. 
And then when another guy steps in and starts asking more specific questions, our Redbeard suddenly gets all scared and stops his arrogant posture and becomes all humble, suddenly not knowing anything about his creator God. He actually makes the point that because he is ignorant, therefore God. It's quite weird. And then repeats some of the nonsense he stated before. So I'm not going to go there again. What is telling is that what I pointed out in the beginning is his belief that something can come from nothing. Saying, I'm saying God created the universe out of nothing. Out of nothing. I'm saying that, yeah. Nothing. The absence of everything. God is not subject to the laws of physics. Yeah? So on closing, just like the hijab guy did, he glows and displays his deluded, dishonest mindset where he thinks he's actually managed to achieve something, deluding himself even further. He also does not realize what a pitiful little mind he actually is. My reasons for believing what I believe is the Quran. Now, if you atheists, pantheists, whomever, wish to challenge my belief, then you need to challenge the reasons for it, which is the Quran. Now, you have to prove to me I'm delusional for believing the Quran, which means you have to prove to me the Quran is what? Written by men, authored by man, nothing to do with God. If you can do that, good luck. Inshallah. We've been trying for 1400 years, still not done it. Inshallah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Okay, thanks for holding out until the end. This is really a long video. And taking interest in this long video. And if you like it anyway, just give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, then give me a thumbs down. But do me a favor, tell me why you liked it or why you didn't. And if you didn't like it, why, what, what, what could I do better? Thanks. See you again soon. Bye.